Coming up this week on Beers in the Shed, we're launching our massive national campaign, Respect the Bush. And of course, we've got some huge giveaways, including one that you're gonna have to wait to find out about, but it's an absolute cracker. Beers in the Shed, let's get into it. Well, welcome to another episode of Beers in the Shed. However, this time, of course, have a look around, we're not in the shed, we're out in the bush, and um, more importantly, we're in Cape York, just out the back of Cohen, the pub's just up there, and um, I'm just about to get Graham on the line. I'm, of course, down in um, Cape York, filming a bunch of really cool videos at the moment, and um, we've been up here for a week and a half, two weeks, feels like a long time, and I'm covered in red dust, Econ's not working in the big girl just yet, but it's its first maiden voyage on tough tracks, and I've got to say, it ate the telly track up, but anyway, you'll get to see that pretty soon. Let me just dial Graham in, you there, mate? Hey, how are you, buddy? Mate, I'll just, I've saved opening my beer until you got there. Cheers, mate. Oh, look, I'll do the same. Good on you, mate. Cheers. Ooh, that's cold. And how's that, mate? And you're not in your shed either. You're out in the bush. Mate, I am uh, super remote right now. We've just spent five days doing a, um, a track that dates back to the 1850s, believe it or not. It goes from Southern Cross all the way through to Menzies, out in the middle of absolutely nowhere via the Helena and Aurora Ranges. And I tell you, this is one of the best outback tracks, and I don't mean this because I'm from Western Australia, but literally that I've done anywhere in Australia. It is truly spectacular. I'd love it out here, mate. To go. Well, we're here, obviously, in Cape York without you for the first time in, I think this mm. is my ninth trip up, mate, and it's the first time without you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's. I, I must say, I've been trying to keep away from sort of social media and things just in case I, I get jealous. But uh, you look, you're in Cohen tonight, is that right? Cohen tonight, and... Um, Ah, I've yes. warned the pub that I'm going to be going up soon, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mate, can you just give them, uh, give them my best and tell them I... I uh, they'll know me. They'll, 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 they'll remember actually, me. They're, they're actually kind of um, stoked that, you know, my partner in crime wasn't up there with me because last time, <laughs> I think from memory, we had quite a few beers at the Cohen Hotel, the we old nearly, exchange we hotel, the, the sex pub, exchange. Mate. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we nearly <laughs> broke the pub. It was a bit full on. It was a bit full on. We've got a massive episode today for beers yep. in the shed or in the bush, whatever you want to call this Beers one. in the bush. And um, we've got a really, really cool hot topic, which we'll get into yeah. soon. But of course, every time you watch this show, you can win a stack of prizes. And this show is no different because we've got a stack of really cool prizes to give away. And there'll be more on that later, mate. There'll absolutely be more on that yeah. later. Respect the bush campaign, mate. Um, I think this is overdue that we... Oh, I'm going to start getting passionate, mate. The yeah. amount of bloody rubbish that's being left behind in the Aussie bush is it's its next level. It's... And I think a lot of people say they're going to do something, and a few people do. Look, there's some really good cats out there that are picking up rubbish, but for the most part, it just gets left out there. And if someone yep. doesn't do something, if we don't sort of step up, mate, um, it's... It's, it's going to get next level. Explain to the folks at home what Respect the Bush is all about, Sean. This is a campaign that it started off with Luke from Drifter. And um, he got in contact with us. He had a weekend away where I guess he was just shocked about how much uh, rubbish was in the bush. Now, he'll tell it better than me, but the story goes that I think it was his niece um, grabbed the bag out of a car and started picking up rubbish around the campsite. And she's about yeah, four right. years yep. old or five years old, <laughs> so, like quite young. Yep. And Luke just thought for a second, heck, if she can do that, a lot of other people should be doing that. And um, yep. we're all big people. We're going into the bush and um, we love the bush, obviously. So it's about time we started respecting the bush. So the whole concept is, is to bring two bags in and take two bags out. Now, yep. one bag, of course, is for your rubbish. You're going to use, you're going to have rubbish yeah, when you're out in the tracks. We'll There's no doubt rubbish. about it. Yes, it's, it happens. We'll yep. rubbish. The second bag is to pick up other people's rubbish. So don't just bring your rubbish home. Let's start picking up other people's rubbish and together, maybe as a group, we can get this um, you know, this, this whole campaign kicked off and start to respect our bush a lot more. The, the, what you just said then, mate, together. I think that's the mm. thing because I, I think sometimes, and I mean, I'm a bit guilty of it too. I will, you know, you sometimes think, oh, shivers, if I'm the only one doing this, what's the point, you know? Yeah. But yeah. if you know there's uh, you know, 10,000 people around Australia right now, this minute on the yep. Saturday afternoon, picking up rubbish with you, you sort of think, well, heck, I'm part of a big gang here. We're doing the right thing. That's what it's all about. I've been up here in Cape York for a little bit now and, um, you know, there's there's... The amount of travellers here in Cape York is down 70% on last year. Whoa, I guess co whoa, whoa. COVID, it's it's really quiet for a peak time, you know. We, we never come this late in the season, usually to probably avoid the crowds. Um, yep. And there's no one up here, yet guess what? I'm still finding rubbish absolutely everywhere. Yeah, that's, yep. It's kind of sad to see. You know, you, you even seen people who have gone to the effort of putting their rubbish into bags, and then they just chuck that bag behind a tree or something like that. And, of course, the crows get into it. That rubbish is everywhere. And yeah, yep, you know, I don't yep. want to make this negative because this concept is such a positive change for everything full-wheel drive, everything that we stand for, Graham. Like, this is yeah, mate, what yeah, it's all about. Yeah. You know, we've been, 
you know, big believers that of course we should pick our own rubbish up and we should clean up our favourite parts of the bush. But this is a campaign that it's going to make it a lot easier for people to pick up rubbish in the bush and clean our place. Because as far as I'm concerned, no one else is going to pick up this rubbish unless it's us no. four drivers making That's this right. change. Yep. The cool thing is that Luke is starting to make bags. So a lot of people are thinking like, well, yeah, this is great, but it gets better because Luke's actually making bags from Drifter. So there's a bunch of sponsors involved. We've um, sort of rattled the tin around the industry, got a bunch of really cool sponsors involved. We're talking about Fulcrum, Spares Box, uh, Snatch Clothing, yep. of course Drifter. Um, we've been able to raise a bit of money. We're gonna make, I think Luke is doing his first run of 15,000 bags. Yep. Yep. And um, yep, we're going to be able to get those out to you guys free of charge. That's our plan. And um, hopefully that'll make somewhat of a difference. Mate, what I also love about these bags, and I think a lot of people probably haven't quite got this concept, is that Luke, are making the, Luke and Drifter are making these bags so they can be reused. Not just once, not just twice. I'm talking dozens and dozens of times. Look, I'm sort of thinking that I'm going to use mine to pick up rubbish where I can, but if there's a clean campsite and there's no, I'm going to put my dirty clothes in it or, I don't know, some firewood <laughs> in there. They're top quality bags, mate. They're not just plastic top. bags that are going to go into a to landfill. They are, you know, yeah. they're the bees and these, mate. Absolutely. And the best the best news is is we're going to somehow get these to you for free. So via the Drifter website or via the Snatch Clothing website, we're yep. going to be able to get these bags to you guys for free. So there's yep. going to be absolutely no excuses to pick up no. rubbish. And um, that's what's so exciting about this. But look, I reckon we um, throw to Luke because Luke from Drifter, it was his idea at the start. When he came to us, of course, we were just, we jumped in with both feet. We said, yes, we're a part of this. But let's hear from Luke now and um, he'll explain it even better than us. G'day guys, Luke the Drifter here up in the Barrington Tops and uh, you know we've got this new campaign we're doing this called Respect the Bush and this is what it's all about, filling uh, rubbish bags you know with rubbish we find in the bush, other people's rubbish and also our own and bringing it out again, helping to clean out the bush. You know, uh, four drive 24-7, got on board in a big way very quickly and pledged you know, 10,000 of these bags which is brilliant. Uh, also with industry partners Bears box and fulcrum suspension, so and snatch clothing. These are going to be available on the snatch clothing website and the drifter website very soon. They're a reusable rubbish bag, and uh, I hope you can get involved and help us uh, make a big difference. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Luke. You've hit the nail on the head, mate. This is going to be absolutely huge, and already it is generating discussions all around. Well, heck, I was going to say around Australia, but it's also around the world. Now, got a few people that have sort of got in touch with us. Um, Maddox Horton, Nunes State Forest, is first on my list for cleanup. Sure, mate. We've been out yeah. there, and yeah, I think oh, Maddox yeah. is on that, the on the that ball needs, there. That needs a lot of a cleanup out there, and a lot of yep, people get together. Yep. Hopefully, what about Gary Neal, mate? Definitely keen. We'll get get it out amongst the Victorian high country. This is yeah, it's going to be a like, tough one. Everyone is just area. starting to look at their local areas and, yeah. and think, yeah, that's yeah. the first cab off the rank. People are getting excited yep. to pick rubbish up out in the bush, which is pretty How cool. How cool is that? Joshua yeah. Smith heading straight to my local Wombat. Yeah, yeah, look, sadly, Wombat State Forest. Love your work, mate. Josh, when you get out there, mate, that's Wombat's going to need a bit of work. Um, at times, though, I've, what I've noticed about Wombat is that the locals out there are bloody passionate about that that bit of, mm -hmm. bit, of, bit of country out there. They love to wheel out there. And I've been out there yep. sometimes with you, mate, and we've seen the campgrounds pretty good and then other times yeah. a bit how you're going. So yep, yep. I think I think Josh will lead the charge out that way. Good on you, bud. Really appreciate it. Yep. What about Kirk? Kirk Bolton. Um, definitely follow the campaign. We'll start by cleaning up the tracks around the Hawkesbury and Bells. So around that oh, Lithgow yeah, yeah. area. And um, yep. yeah, look, this, this this is great. People, people are not even saying, look, I'll be a part of it. They're already saying where they're going to start to clean up, which is cool. Hey, there's a, we don't really hear about Halls Gap in Gippsland that much, but Sean Matthews, he's um, he's going to head mm -hmm. up that way once the borders are open. And uh, yep. Tin Can Bay to Rainbow Beach. That gets so much traffic up through there that, uh, yeah, that'll need a bit of work out there, uh, Sean O. That's Sean yep, Matthews, yep. not you, mate. I'm not expecting you to yeah. go down there. Sean O'Matthews. <laughs> <Matthews. laughs> you never know, mate. Sounds like uh, a good excuse to get down there, though. It actually, you know what it does sound like? You know, you get your mates together, and you know what? Well, you don't need yeah. an excuse to go four-wheel driving, but you get your mates together now, and you say, have you blokes got your bags? They say, yes, we have. Let's yeah. go away for a long weekend. Let's take a day Let's off work. We're going to pick up rubbish. Pick up, the pick boss, up one bag your of rubbish. Bosses can't, hard. Your bosses can't say anything about it. If you said to your boss, I'm going no. out bush to pick up rubbish, he'd be yeah. a mongrel if you said you can't. He would. Exactly right. So, he should give you a pay rise excuse. and call you a hero from now on. There you That's... go. Wear your underpants on the outside, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and look, there's been a stack of questions coming up as well. So um, let's get into a couple of those questions that have been let's um, do that. right on social media. Ben Sacco, how do we get wheelie bags? Well, yep. um, 
in just over a week, they're gonna be available from the Drifter website or the Snatch Clothing website. And like we said, we're gonna try and make those free of charge so everybody yep. can get them. So that's pretty cool. Yep. So it's just over a week. So uh, of course, we're answering uh, Flexi TJ's question. When will these be available? About a, roughly yep. a week. It's, you know, yep. 15,000 bags. Takes a bit of time, mate. You don't just do that overnight. So bear with us, folks. If it's a bit longer than a week, um, we're gonna do it. It might just take yep. a little bit longer. We've got uh, Jimmy's Power here. He says, any chance of getting some over to the NZ? And I believe the answer to that is 100% yes. So if yes, the old yes. NZ, if our, if our cousins across the ditch yep. need to do a bit of cleaning up, which they probably do, we're all humans, yeah, we'll yep. get them over to you. No problem at all. All right, well, I reckon we um, put it to the audience and uh, let us know in the comments below. Firstly, what do you think about this campaign to respect the Aussie bush? What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments below. And also, where are you gonna go to clean up. Like, is it going to be a local area? Are you going to make a trip out of it? Maybe you make a trip to Fraser Island or somewhere yep. cool. That's yep. what I'd do. I reckon I'd, yep. I'd actually plan it and go, right, that's a good enough excuse to go pack the four-wheel drive and head away for a couple of weeks. <laughs> now, look, folks, if you are going out bush with your mates, you're making a special trip out there, please keep us in the loop. We would love to see you folks out there on your trip. Yeah, respect the bush trip with your mates. Photos of you, your rigs, your mates, and all the bags that you've managed to fill with rubbish. Because, Sean, what do you reckon, mate? Do you reckon we can get, what's a good number? I'm going to aim high. Oh. What about 10,000 bags 10, of rubbish? 10, do you reckon we can do that's, that? That's what I was thinking. Pretty it's going to be 15,000 bags, bags made in the first run. So if we can get 10,000 bags of rubbish Whoa. cleaned up, holy Whoa. heck. That's Imagine that. made a difference if that's the case. Yeah, that's huge. That is huge. So, folks, please, even if it's just one bag, you, you filled one mm. bag up, you've got your own, you've got one, let us know. We want to see it because that's one bag more than was being filled up the day before. But if we can yep. get 10,000, holy heck, man, that is yep. huge. Oh, look, mate, I know what Aussie four-wheel drivers are like. They're gonna get behind this like you wouldn't believe. Yep. And um, I'm just so excited to start to see some bags come out of the bush full of rubbish <laughs> and clean some places <laughs> up. I can't wait. Gonna be sick, gonna be sick. Mate, have we got a special guest this week? We do, mate. And um, I was lucky enough to catch up with Jeremy from Direction Plus. Now, Jeremy is an expert in filtration and uh, I've been up in here Cape York for a couple of weeks and I've seen a couple of trucks, four wheel drives on the back of tow trucks that have um, got a bad batch of diesel or got a bit of water into their fuel and um, Jeremy's got the solution how to fix that. Today's special guest is none other than diesel filtration expert, Jeremy from Direction Plus. Now, we put it to you guys to find out what you wanted to know about diesel filtration, in particular, how to get the most out of your engine, and of course, to protect that investment. Diesel engines are very expensive, so it only makes sense that we use whatever we can to try and protect these things, get the most life out of them, and also protect the performance of your diesel engine. So mate, if it's okay, you're gonna roll through a couple of quick questions. I love it when we get an expert here, because we can get to the bottom of a lot of things that there's a lot of confusion when it comes to uh, filtration in particular, and um, catch cans as well. So mate, I'll start with the first one. This is a great one from uh, Bailey Gins. Is it worth putting a pre-filter on an old diesel engine such as a TD42. Yeah, like pre-filters, they'll protect, and if it's a diesel engine, you want defense against water. Yep. A so pre-filter's the best way to do it. So it doesn't matter if you've got a new or an old engine, if you want to keep water out of your diesel, which I think every single diesel owner does, a, a secondary filter is a way to go. That's the way to go, yep. Yeah, because obviously, a lot of people talk about them with more modern vehicles, common rails and stuff like that. It's a no-brainer. But also some of those older ones are a bit tougher, yep. but you still need one. Yeah, they'll take a little bit more abuse and a little bit more water, but at the same time, like the tolerances are so fine. So, mm. yeah, it's a cheap insurance to, to make sure you protect your investment. Here's a good one as well from Jibber Jabber 017. What a name. Um, can a pre-line filter fit with an auxiliary battery setup in a 2020 Hilux? It's quite specific. When we develop our kits, we try and make them as compatible with as many other accessories as possible. Um, obviously, there's little differences between different kits and stuff, but yeah, we have on the, the N80 Hiluxes, we have seen dual battery systems yep. on those as well with our equipment. That's a cool thing about the kits, I suppose. You just basically let uh, Direction Plus know what vehicle you've got, how it's set up in the engine bay, and you generally have a kit for it and even if you don't you've got a universal kit don't you yeah absolutely so that you can make that fit in just about every even the old dirty 30 engine bay mate <laughs> here's another good one from cj milner carpentry is it worth putting one on a car with over 800,000 k's on the engine is the damage already done yeah so if you've got that many k's on your car uh you'd be better off cleaning the inlet manifold out making getting it back to the way that it was when it was new and then putting one on. Like the ProVent will stop anything from building up from the time that you put it on. Yep. It's not going to remove anything that's already there. So yeah, get your inlet manifold cleaned out, mm -hmm. throw a ProVent on and then it'll just maintain its performance throughout the rest of its life. 
Well, here's another question from Kyle Bradley. How often does a filter in a pro vent need to be changed? So under normal operating circumstances around every 40,000 kilometers, obviously um, every engine is different, even same engines are different. Um, yeah. Also depends on if you've had your engine tuned or, or anything like that, but roughly every 40,000. But if it's outside of normal operating conditions, uh, you probably drop that down to every 30 or 25. Yeah, cool. That's still, yeah, that's a fair old service life anyway. Yeah. Okay, here's one from Gabrielle Bark. If they are so good, why won't the factories put them in a standard? Short answer, money. It costs them money to do that, and by the time it becomes a problem, it's outside of the manufacturer's warranty, so therefore they don't need to worry about it, and then it comes to the customer's problem. Yeah, so it's probably a very good practice if you do, if you've gone out and bought a brand new vehicle, one of the first things maybe to do is put a catch can in there. Yeah, throw one on straight away, yep, and then and you don't have to worry about it. You won't have to get it cleaned necessarily down the track because it won't be building up any carbon or oil and stuff like that. Exactly. Sean Herra, what's the difference between a cheap Chinese ProVent copy versus the real deal? Big price difference aside. The biggest difference is how well it works. Like obviously um, the manufacturers that we work with, they spend a lot of time and money on developing a product and making sure that it does what, what they say it does. Yep. Um, whereas uh, the, a lot of the copies or um, rip-off versions of it, they don't have to spend that money. They just copy something. It looks like it does the same job, but they haven't spent the time, money, and effort into making sure that it does exactly what it's, they say that it does. Yeah, exactly right. Because just looking at a cheap Chinese copy, looks the same, but inside would be vastly different, wouldn't it? Exactly, yeah. Here's one from Custom Camo. Are they an easy DIY install? So we make all our kits as easy as possible to install. Obviously, it requires a little bit of mechanical aptitude, Yep. Um, but there's uh, fairly extensive instructions with all our kits and yep. all the instructions are written for whatever application that they're going on. Yeah, well, I can vouch for that. I've installed one, I've installed a couple actually on all my vehicles and um, even I can install it within about an hour inside the shed. So if I can do it, I reckon just about everybody um, can do it. Aiden 665, are catch cans just there for reliability will also help performance? So all our products are designed for reliability to make your investment last longer. Um, but the, the performance side of it comes in is you're maintaining that per, the original performance for the life of the vehicle. Um, so you're not getting that slow decrease in performance, particularly with the ProVents. Here's a, here's a cheeky one from Matty Webb. Can we get a discount with a laughing smiley face? Can we get <laughs> course, a discount? That's a great question. Is. Now, I'm going to twist Jeremy's arm here. Mate, can we get a discount for our viewers? A lot of people would love to fit one of these to their vehicles. Mate, what can you do? I reckon we could probably do, I don't know, 15% off for ProVents. off for ProVents. So yep. all ProVent catch cans, 15% off. Yep. So how can people take advantage of that, mate? If they uh, jump on our website and they use four-wheel drive 24-7 promo code in the checkout. Well, there you go, folks. The promo code four-wheel drive 24-7. Simply put it in at the checkout and say 15% off. That is an absolute steal, mate. Thank you so much for your time and also for that discount. It was your wealth of knowledge, mate. No, it's been awesome. Thanks again. Mate, what a deal. And I've got to admit something to you here, Sean. I, the big G, yeah. I'm a... <laughs> I'm actually venting straight out of the old turbo uh, down onto my exhaust, my dump pipe of all things, straight out of the turbo. And um, the amount of dust that's accumulated on that, uh, well, let's just call it pure <laughs> black oil, she smells disgusting. I desperately need yeah. to put a catch can on this big old girl because she's, um, mate. yeah, she runs a bit rich. That's a bit of a fail on my behalf, mate, but I tell you what, I'm not the only one out yeah. there. It seems that there are lots and lots of fellow four-wheel drivers around Australia oh. doing the odd fail here and there, mate. Favourite part of the show, I've got to be so honest many. with you, four-wheel drive. Oh, I love this bit. Folks, don't forget that coming up uh, later in the show, we've got a massive giveaway. Uh, we'll, let's, we'll leave that till the end. Let's not look at that right now. But um, this week, of course, hashtag 4WD247 fails. That hashtag has gone through the roof. We're going to break the internet I with that know. hashtag, I reckon. It's I know. Absolutely nuts. It's even more popular than the hashtag of um, Graham Cahill sings Taylor Swift. That's, um, that's, that's even more popular that a, than that. Well, I, gee whiz. Sing it. I dance yes. to it pretty well. I don't sing to it terribly good, but <laughs> I dance to it extremely well. That last time Mate, you were this... back in Cohen, actually, you did. Oh, you did that's a right. Version I of that. I forgot. You could have kept that. your that pants so on. That's the only thing I'd say about that. But that is so embarrassing. <laughs> Let's just move straight on there, folks. There's no. Don't even think about that. Don't even get that in your mind. This week's winner is getting a set of Terralume X1 camp lights. Shauna, you've got those in um, Sooty, I think. Have you got them in Sooty? I definitely, definitely have them in Sooty, and um, also the Dirty Thirty as well. They're, um, okay. they're great little lights. That's the prize this week, folks. A set of Terralim X1 cam. Let's get straight into it. We've got yep. Brother 80 uh, with just <laughs> a little too much send. 
Oh, look a little at that. too much sand. We've all been there before. <laughs> look at that. Look at that gritty, like sandy mud. That would be fantastic for your bearings and your seals. Oh, and oh, I reckon yeah. that'd be really good for a four-wheel drive. That stuff. No, exactly right. It'd be so good when you're in that situation as well, and you forgot the tools and you had to borrow some and use it on yeah. that dirty vehicle. <laughs> imagine, so imagine good. look on your mate's face. Yeah, you'd be uh, now, stoked. Get a load of this. Uh, I reckon I'm just going to take a guess here because I can't see their number plate, but I reckon these boys are driving the Holland Track in Western Australia, um, which is Ooh, actually really? out to the yeah, 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 sort of. Well, it's a fair way from here right now, but similar sort of country. That would be super deep, and it looks like winter. It would be about eight degrees, I'd reckon. So oh, yeah. you got beanies on, so you know it's cold. <laughs> you know it's cold, and so what they've done oh, is no. they've tried to go through one of those water crossings, and they have not attached a snatch strap first. So. Take one for the team. In you go. Yeah, Look at him. He's yeah fully that's a hard dressed, way dude. of learning that. Yeah, I know. That's his train. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Now, look, we really shouldn't be making fun of uh, this mate of Adam's. We don't know his name. I probably wouldn't be putting my name forward either, but he's got himself <laughs> first timer, brand new driver. And he's out uh, at Lithgow Way, I think. At Lithgow with the Have Wombat a go, Holes. Mate. Have he's a having go. a red hot go. Look, the good news well, is if there's any consolation prize, is if there's ever an excuse to get yourself a bull bar. Mate, you're going to chuck that bit away anyway. I reckon he <laughs> might have known that in the back of his mind. He just thought, well, to heck with it. I'll make their job easier when it gets to the fitters. Yep. I'll just take it off for The missus wouldn't let me do it, and I'll show her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show, she doesn't know. I'll show her. Uh, Kyle and Josh, big thumbs up. They've done the old yep. uh, whoopsie-doo. A little bit of wrong line, oh, and too much far right. Out. Far out. Look, I, I love this. The fact he still can do a thumbs up and a bit of a smile. Look, that's... Now, look, well, be hard welcome. to do. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle and Josh, you're part of the club. Look. You are. We've all the done old, it. We've all done the it. The old rollover club. It's uh, it's it's exclusive, yep. but not that exclusive. Surf in the surf. Uh, this is from oh, New Zealand, mate. Oh no. That that won't wash out. That's... Unlucky, cousin. That's no yeah, good. Unlucky. That's not good. Get a tin from the chili bin and don't think about it. It'll be all alright. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Stay up high that's on the shame. beach, folks. Stay up high on the beach. Worst case, you're gonna get bogged. Yeah. That yep. there, you know, yep. that, that's terrible. No, you don't. Kate Melville, mate. <laughs> Liam. Have a go at that. Oh wow, wow, wow. Mm, that's up near me that's... at the moment. Yeah, it is. It is actually. Don't be, yeah. don't be doing that. You know, you know the funny thing about yeah. Liam. They they spent hours winching themselves forward. They finally got out of the bog, and then they realised they had gone the wrong way. They had to turn around, oh. go back through it again. <laughs> That's, uh. we, we've been there before, actually. You and me, mate. We Remember have. that time up in the Gulf? Where yes, I we do. took a, we took a left. We should have taken a right. We got stuck yep. for two hours. Same same story. So we can yep. certainly sympathise with Liam. That's that's uh, pretty wild. We had to have a couple of beers that night. But Shauna, as we know, mate, there can be only one winner. Terraloom lights, and I think this one is a very worthy one for one reason. Poor old Andre, stuck in the Simpson oh, on the wow. Madigan line for two days. Now, what that means That's... is you're still stuck when it's night time. <laughs> so, a set of camp lights would have made cooking dinner just that little bit easier that night, despite yeah, the fact it absolutely that, would do. Yeah, that your kitchen is now at uh, knee height rather than where it should be at waist height because you're so darn bogged. But <laughs> good on him. Next time he's out there, at least he'll be able to see at night when he's trying to winch forward on the Madigan line. Poor bugger. Look at that, mate. You would be... That's so remote, wow. too. Two days waiting so for someone. That is so bogged, too. Two yeah, days. Yep. You'd, uh, you'd start asking a few questions, wouldn't you? You would. Imagine, too, after two days, you finally see your first car to snatch you out, and it's a Jimny. Just hasn't got the weight nor the power to help you out at all. Let us wave well, and go by. E even, wor <laughs> even worse than Nissan. Far out. I'd, I'd right, moving say, right look, along, I'd, mate. I'll, moving right along. I'd just wait for three days if I was him. <laughs> well, you're, you're probably right, because the Nissan would just drive straight around. It would be just... Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't even get stuck. Mate, that's... um couple of fails there that you and I have been through ourselves but folks please yep. don't forget keep sending us your photos and your videos you could win our prize how do you do it just use the hashtag 4wd247 fails you could see yourself failing 24 7 absolutely Well, Graham, I love this section so much. Any chance you get when someone shows you their rig, <laughs> I'm all, all ears and eyes, mate. And um, mate, this too. week we've got some absolute cracking rigs to show and um, I can't wait to get through those. You know, just look, there's over 14,000 people who have used that hashtag, full wheel drive 24 seven rigs. Now that's insane, mate. It is insane. Absolutely I'd like to put insane. a challenge out there to everyone who has used 4WD, 24 7 rigs. I want to see two bags of rubbish. That's 28,000 bags of rubbish. Wow. If you can use wow. that hashtag, you can pick up a bag of rubbish. So there's I my like challenge that. to you. I like that. 
And I'll tell you what, this, this time around as well, the winner, the best rig, is going to get themselves a ProVent catch can. Something that mm -hmm. Graham should have on his GU. In fact, every really four-wheel driver should have one full stop. And um, I've got one on my 79 and also on the 80. And the first thing I do is I'm going to put one on the, on the 30 here when I get home, because I can't wait. I've already spoken to Jeremy, mate. I've um, got 15% off myself, and I'm going <laughs> to take advantage of that. <laughs> um, mate, let's get right into this. There's a couple of cracking rigs. And the first one, yeah, we don't mate. get to see enough Amarox, I reckon. No. This one here is an absolute crack. Cracker, and it's just Looks set tough. up for touring. I love this thing. It's um, the V6 one, so you know it goes like the absolute clappers. And um, look, it just looks pretty tough, I reckon. Mate, have you, that bull bar have, and all the rest of it. Have you noticed his dog in that photo? <laughs> I thought that was Nathan, but obviously not. Um, <laughs> How relaxed no, is that dog? The, the dog is loving life, and with a with a setup like that, you should be too. That Go is pretty cool. Check out this one, mate. Uh, Y62. Ooh. Again, we don't see a lot of these ones. These no. things come out with about 300 kilowatts off the showroom floor, and this one's got a lot of mods, so I'm guaranteed this one probably makes a little bit more power than that. Look at the look at it, mate. That looks like something out of RoboCop. I mean, it looks, it looks tough. See, see he's, he's, he's actually put a before and after. See the before and then below the after. He's done a bit of work to yeah. it. It's, um, it's a good looking rig. I couldn't tell the difference, mate, but um, look, 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 <laughs> it's, it's not a bad little <laughs> patrol. Um, it's got, look, a red arc system, a 270 degree awning, 35s on that thing. Pretty yep. cool thing. Sliders, twin lock, all the rest of it. It's ready to go. Uh, this Ooh, is a I really like cool one. one, mate. This one is um, an Austrian Defender. Um, yeah, it's, like it's a British Defender, but it's based in Austria. And um, this thing has done 19 different countries. So it's been all over Europe, into North Africa. It's just really travelled the whole world almost. So, Hasn't um, done the best country I, yet. Yep, I reckon flow overland. I reckon you need to take it to Australia and pick up some rubbish while you're down there. Yeah. Um, look at that. <laughs> look at the absolute beast. Look, I like how, I like how the, the roof has actually been cut to make way yeah. for a bit of a tent. That is, and see, that the, is see the spare cool tyre on the back. It's actually a uh, that's a barbecue plate on the spare tire, which is which what, is cool you too. You just burn your spare tire, do you? You just burn your spare tire, mate. Makes your snags taste a little bit rubbery. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's, it's how you get your no, fire going. I like that. that. That's cool. Yeah. That is yep. pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And check this one out here. This one here is Rob with his Ranger. Now it's a twin locked Ranger. He uses it every chance he gets, that is a beast. and um, it's it's set up for remote touring. I mean, it just looks pretty cool. Yeah, um, I love the uh, GT racing stripes. Oh, yeah, exactly. I don't know what three pick stands for, but um, oh yeah, oh epic, three. epic. I get it now. I get it now. Epic I, backwards. I'm, I'm like the, I'm like the slowest yeah. person to read a number plate, but um, I didn't epic. get it either. That's mate. pretty no. cool. And I, 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 I get it. I get it, and I respect yep. that. That is cool. Um, look at this one here. This is Tom's Navara. Um, oh, man, like, I'm, look. I haven't seen many really cool Navaras, but this one here is right yeah, up there. It's sick. got everything. And um, do you know the, the funny story about this one is Tom it's is based funny, in Victoria. The poor it's not funny at all. But no, I can say that when I'm in Cape York, I suppose. But he bought this. He bought the vehicle seven months ago. Uh, He's kitted it out all that time. Hasn't had a chance to use it because, of course, the Victoria's been in some pretty harsh isolation. So look, poor buggers. Tom, if it's any consolation, mate, those isolations should lift pretty soon, and you'll be out using that thing in the high country, right around Australia. Even heck, take it up to Cape York. That, that vehicle will do all that and do it easy yep, too. Easily. Hi, my name's Tom, and this is my Series Four Navara. Things didn't exactly go to plan for Tom after buying this 2019 SL Navara. He's been using the ISO lockdown of 2020 to absolutely kit his rig out, ready to hit the tracks. Tom's given the nav a 3-inch lift with a diff drop and 33-inch tyres. The brake lines have been extended and sway bars added. And the back is fitted with a custom tray and canopy that Tom can easily take off to switch from tourer to track weapon. There's the usual goodies like a run for winch, front bar and UHF. And Tom is currently working on installing a full 12 volt system, fridge, roof racks, sliders and custom snorkel. Now have a go at this one, Graham. This one here is a deserved winner of our prize for the best rigs. This is a really tricked up N80 Hilux. Now it's brand spanking your looks like it, but it's already done yeah. a trip to Cape York. It's got all the kit on it, including a mitts canopy. Well, why don't we take yep. a closer look? G'day, my name's Reese, and this is my Hilux. This rig might look showroom new, but it's actually a build that's been four years in the making, with Reese slowly putting together his ultimate touring vehicle. The Hilux is fitted with a MITS alloy canopy designed for touring with a water tank, toolboxes, clear view easy slide and pantry. There's also a 150 litre long range tank, we're talking dual battery systems, a rooftop tent and 270 degree awning. The Hilux sits on 33s with 2 inch lifted shocks with upgraded springs, aftermarket upper control arms and diff drop kit. 
For accessories, there's of course a winch, bull bar, 9 inch spotties, roof rack and snorkel. The 12 volt system is run through a Red Arc Manager 30 system with a 40 amp charger, 120 amp hour lithium batteries, 150 watt solar panel and a 2000 watt inverter. While the Hilux has already taken Reese all over the East Coast, his ambition is to pack up and do the full lap of Oz. Well, mate, that was a cracking Hilux and um, a well-deserved winner of um, that ProVent catch can. So hopefully they can put that to use. And um, like you, mate, Graham, you need to get one because they <laughs> are a very, very must-have accessory. Uh, yep. First thing I'm doing the 30 when I get back is put a ProVent catch can on it because if you want to keep your engine in good health, there's no better way to do it, mate. And look, don't forget to keep using the hashtag full drive 24 seven rigs. Now there's a whole stack of them up there. So make sure you make your rig very special. You know, give it a bit of a clean, I don't know. Yeah, Put it out in the rock, up. get a bit of the sun just right, the gold now, <laughs> just get those photos looking Settle really good down, so they can end up short, on our eh? show. Mate, oh. I've, I've taken a couple of, uh, actually this what, is really What F-stop would you use, mate? What aperture would you use, mate? Aperture? Yeah. I'd use about four, four different types, actually. I'd use <laughs> all the main ones, including yep. the big yep. ones. Yeah. I, I suggest you stick with the photographer I'd whilst you're at Bush, mate. Cause, uh, <laughs> get the white balance right and right, the shutter get the speed right, up yeah, there. Yep. <laughs> How about we, uh, we we mentioned at the beginning of the show that we've got a big giveaway. Yep. Um, pretty stoked about this. Our uh, yep. our mates at Ultimate Nine, who were formerly known as iDrive, um, are going to yeah. be giving away 10. That's right, I said 10 of uh, their EVC ten. throttle controllers. Yeah, 10 of them, mate. They're going to be giving away absolutely Far free. Out. 10 Far EVC out. throttle controllers. One. Now, you know about I, them. I've got, one on the sev I've got one on the 79, mate. And I, yep. look, I just filmed a little um, comparison of the before and after with yep. the Ultimate 9. And um, get this, mate. When I did it without the Ultimate 9, and then I did yep. it with the Ultimate 9 on the Ultimate 9 setting. <laughs> yeah, the um, Ultimate 9 I setting, actually, yep. I actually, I actually took off that fast that I like, I sort of did a bit of a hiccup and I had to go and do it again because it sort of threw me in the back of the seat. I wasn't ready for it. And uh, they, they really do again. make a difference. Yeah, they really do make yeah. a difference. It's um, it's it's chalk and cheese on certain vehicles and on, and on others it just makes them so much more drivable. I actually got my old man one for his birthday for his Prado. Did you? And yeah, yeah mate, nice he, he absolutely yeah. loves it because he tows a little caravan around and he reckons it made yeah. a huge difference to him. So uh, there you go, sucking up to me old man I was. <laughs> That's a go. That's a go. So how do people enter, mate? They go mate, it's to... Very um... simple. It's super simple. You don't have to do much at all. All you got to do is head to uh, the 24-7 Instagram and Facebook pages. All the details are there. And trust me when I say it'll take you about eight seconds to enter and you win yourself a throttle controller. Chuck Heck. it on your four-wheel drive. That's a go. I'm going to enter a couple of times, actually. Oh, you probably, sh you probably should, mate. Put them on that dirty, <laughs> the dirtiest of 30s. Make it go a little bit quicker. Mate, I reckon that's about well, all we've got time for this week, unfortunately. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, it's been a cracker. Look, yep. anytime I can go and have a beer, and especially when I'm in Cape York, mate, and obviously you're having a ball in WA. Yeah, it's mate. Just, it's been a heck of a trip. I just can't wait to show the footage that we've got of this thing. It's sitting there dirty as behind me because I've just taken it through the old telly track. So there's going to be, um, look, Actually, next week on YouTube, we've got the mm -hmm. last of the build-up series on the 30. So make sure you watch that, that one, and then you'll get to see this thing in action. So I, I can't to wait that. to show you that. There's so, been so many people saying, when are you going to take the Dirty 30 on its first trip? Well, you're doing it. Well, just have a look at the state of it behind me. It's, it's, happened. it's definitely done that. It's, it's definitely right been now. used. Mate, we've, uh, we launched um, the first Oz Solo on uh, 4WD 24-7 this week, and uh, yeah, to cool. say that it yeah. went well is a bit of an understatement. It's, um, yeah, it's gone people absolutely loved it. You, Yeah. Here's yeah, something you don't know about that, mate. Well, I rang my mum for a birthday, which is today, mind you, and right. um, I said happy birthday and all the rest of it. Yep, she straight yep. away cut into, I just watched the Oz Solo, and it was so <laughs> good, and she kept going on about that, and I was like, hey, yeah, I'm still here, mum. I'll, I'll pass that on to Graham, but she absolutely uh, loved it, on mate. Her. Good on her. Yeah. So, well, why I, I mentioned that is that I'm working on uh, the next one, which is, I reckon, going to be even better. I had a, I, I, I'm not going to let too much out. No, the cat's not going to come out of the bag, but I'm going further west then you can possibly go without getting your tyres wet. You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see. Mm. But yeah, heck of an Exciting. episode, mate, that's coming up soon. Yeah. And of course, Absolutely. please, folks, stay in touch with us on the community. Of course, we've got our social media channels. We've got Instagram, Facebook. Get on there and check mm -hmm. out what we're doing. There's prizes to be won, competitions. It's, it's all happening over there, mate. And of course, Absolutely. don't forget our big campaign. Respect the bush. It's going to be the huge, big mate. campaign. I can't wait, mate. Make sure, guys, in the comments below, mm -hmm. leave us a comment where you're going to clean up first. Yes, So yes, I yes, can't yes. wait. We've got 15,000 bags to give away. So holy heck, and, we've got, we're going to give some bags away. And photos of you and your mates. Photos of yeah, you and your mates. I, I really wait. want to see those. I can't wait. I can't wait, mate. Well, look, I better get up to the Cohen pub. I can hear them calling me out by name, actually, <laughs> up there. So I better well, go and make sure the beers are still cold. Mate, and, I'm going to um, go have my first share in a week and go to the Menzies pub tonight, <laughs> me and the boys. <laughs> uh, and if you, if you want to Google the Menzies pub, um, well, you're probably, you're in for a surprise. It's going to be a heck of a night. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> hey, can you give my best to the uh, folks behind the bar at the Cohen Hotel? Um, 
I will and do, mate. And if you mate. find they... that left shoe of mine that I lost up there, you can return that to yep. me. That'd be and fantastic. Well, they found your underwear, mate. That was um, yes. that was left there. About that was Excellent. still daylight hours, unfortunately. But <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, the old Cohen Pub and I, we have a very checkered history. I'm, uh, I'm almost I'm sort of Ooh, glad I'm not wait. there. <laughs> I feel I'm going to be bogged at Cohen for a few days. Good, anyway, on, you. Mate, Good on you. I'll catch, I'll catch you around. Good on you, mate. Take care. Catch you soon.